So in part three, we're going to be looking at migrating some of the applications that we run in Kubernetes over to OKD. So one of the most important things that I do with that Kubernetes cluster is monitoring. So I have some sensors running on a Raspberry Pi that do temperature and humidity, for example. I monitor all of my servers that run um, a few important VMs and obviously the applications that then run on top of Kubernetes. So what we want to do is deploy Prometheus and Grafana and then we want to go through and configure them. Now, in previous videos I've made, I've used the Kube Prometheus project and the JSON net file to render manifest that are customized to suit my requirements. And then I've rolled that out to Kubernetes. I'm going to take a different approach with OKD since there is an operator that is provided for Prometheus and Grafana through the operator hub. So I can just point and click and install these and then go through configuring each of the objects. Um, I do like this approach a little bit more because it makes it a little bit easier to manage the data sources and the dashboards within um, Grafana. So we're going to take a look at that in this video and I'll try and keep the parts a little bit shorter now. I know the first two were like 30, 40 minute long videos. So we'll try and do them a bit shorter now that we're just migrating applications over. So if we look at the operators that I have installed now, I installed Cert Manager the other day and I created a cluster issuer. Um, so we'll have a quick look at that. So this is the cluster issuer and I've just taken this directly from um, the Kubernetes environment and I've imported it here. I literally just did kget cluster issuer o yaml and then um, create. So we take a look at the cluster issuer here. I've just removed my email address, but all I needed to change was just the solver. So my solver in this case is going to use the ingress class, which is OpenShift default. So if you do OC get ingress class, you'll see that there is an OpenShift default ingress class. So this will create ingresses that will then be translated into OpenShift routes. And then the challenge request will go through an OpenShift route. That's all I've done there so far. I haven't issued any stiff hits, so we'll just ignore that one for now. We'll go back to our installed operators. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was install Prometheus. So if you go to the operator hub and search for Prometheus, we can see there is the Prometheus operator. So we install that operator. And once it's installed, we need to create instances of that deployment. So we will create a Prometheus instance. So to do that, you just click Create Prometheus and go through and answer the questions here. Now, I wanted to do it with a, a size two, so I've got two replicas of Prometheus running in this cluster. Now, this is in addition to the one that comes with OpenShift. By default, you can't modify that. It's managed by the monitoring cluster operator. So we want to deploy our own instance of Prometheus and we'll create our own dashboards and our own metrics from our own deployment, not using the OpenShift internal one. Now we can go through and configure everything we need. I mean, I can't tell you what, what's right for your environment. I can only tell you what's right for mine. The only thing I did here that I will walk through is I added some persistent storage to the environment because when we get to the very bottom, we can choose the retention size so and the retention time. So I chose 60 weeks. I want to keep over a year's worth of data of this environment. And one of the reasons for that is I also monitor my power metrics. So when I get a power bill, which is normally big because I have a lot of stuff running, I can then compare that to the metrics that I've been collecting. You know, keep people honest. The retention size I set to 250 gig and then I gave it a uh, system volume of 250 gig. So we'll have a look at how I did that. So we'll go to my deployment and just have a look at the YAML. So we go down through here. We can see I've set up Alert Manager. I gave it my additional scrape secrets that we'll look at in a minute. So the different endpoints that aren't within Kubernetes that I want to monitor, they're in a secret called additional scrape configs. And now with storage, so what you want to do is you want to add storage and then volume claim template. Spec resources request storage, I did 248 gig. So all, to make that work, what you need to have is a persistent volume without a persistent volume claim bound to it. So we have a look at my storage of persistent volumes. Now remember I'm deploying two replicas, so I need two persistent volumes. So I just created these persistent volumes, which again come from my NFS server. So you see they're coming from NFS and they're mounting OpenShift Prometheus, for example. And the other one is Prometheus 1. So create two persistent volumes. Then you want to go through and configure that within the YAML of Prometheus. Now you can do this by answering those questions. I just did it all by editing the YAML manually. So if you create it like this with a volume claim template, when that operator creates the pods for Prometheus, it will create a persistent volume claim that should hopefully find the persistent volumes that you have created. 
Now there's replicas too, retention 60 weeks, like you can see, and the retention size, sorry, is 200 gigabytes. So if it gets to 200 gig for whatever reason, that's the maximum it's going to keep data for, which that's an astronomical amount of space. I don't think it will get to that. So after that, that is all we need to do. And then that rolls out the, the pods for that. Now you can go through and create service monitors, which we might look at further once we have imported some Raspberry Pis into this environment, and we might be able to then probe the service that is doing that monitoring on those Raspberry Pis. But that's a problem for another day. At the moment, I haven't done any of this. I just created Alert Manager as well. So again, exactly the same thing. Just cre click on Create. So Create Alert Manager, answer the questions, for whatever is relevant for you. Um, here's mine, for example. You see I've given an external URL, three replicas, and then the namespace it'll be in. And that's it for Prometheus. Prometheus is then deployed. So I've just forwarded the service in this case. I haven't created a route for it at this point. But you can see there that they are my additional um, scrape configs that I added. So I've got the servers and then the temp1 sensor, which is running in the Kubernetes cluster and not accessible from OpenShift. So we have a look at that secret. See, we've got additional scrape configs here. And if we look at the the data within Prometheus additional.yaml, we can see I've just added the YAML formatted um, file that's required for then Prometheus to go out and reach those endpoints. And we know that it works because we can see them in Prometheus. Now, the cool thing about this, doing it this way is if I edit this secret, it instantly changes here. So, for example, I had the wrong IP address in for this server one, which is the OpenShift compute node. I had the wrong IP address there, I had an old one for it. It didn't work. I just quickly updated the secret and then the endpoint became available to me. So the next thing we want to do is then configure Grafana. Now I had a little bit of trouble with this. This is different to how I've normally done it. So we'll go through and explain the different steps and how I ultimately got this to work. So when you create this, there's different sources that you need to create. Now my power monitoring is using an IOTAWatt device. I'll leave a link in the description below. It pushes metrics into an InfluxDB database and Grafana then needs to probe the InfluxDB database, which is supported by Grafana, but it means we need to then configure that using custom resource definitions for our operator to use. So if we look at the Grafana dashboards, we can see that I have two that I've created. So this is my first one. So in here, what we need to do is give it a config map reference. So I'm using a config map called Grafana dashboard, my dashboard. And in that, there is a key called mydashboard.json. Now, I could put multiple keys within the one config map, but in this case, I've created separate ones, and we'll go through and look at the other one in a minute. The other thing we need is a data source. So when you include data sources within the Grafana dashboard kind, it will install that plugin when it deploys the Grafana dashboard. So we need to have Prometheus mentioned here. Now, if we have a look at data sources, we can see that I've got a data source for Prometheus. So in here, what we do is we create a data source with the name Prometheus. Now, this is what we're referencing in our dashboard. And we need to give it the details. So in this case, it's pointing to an internal service within OpenShift on port 9090, and it's named Prometheus. So this, this part here is relevant to Grafana and all the information in Grafana. This one here is relevant to the resources within OpenShift that are referred to by the operator. So the second dashboard I created is called PowerDash. And now again, that refers to a separate config map with a separate JSON file. And I'm using the data source InfluxDB. Now this one I had a little bit of trouble with because there isn't a lot of examples online. So if you look at the actual data source within Grafana, we can see that it has type InfluxDB and it uses a capitalized I and a capitalized DB. Now, when you create this data source, you have to use lowercase when you put it in the type. If you don't, then Grafana won't install the plugin and it doesn't get referenced properly. So the type needs to be all lowercase InfluxDB. I've given it the database it will connect to, which is IOTAWAT, and the URL for InfluxDB. So this is running on a VM on my OpenStack compute node. Now maybe this will change in the future and we'll deploy Influx within OpenShift, but at the moment it just points to a VM. So then for that dashboard, let 
we can see we're using the same name, but we're using the capitalized one because that's what I called it. So if we go to config maps now and have a look at my dashboard. We can see in my dashboard we have a key called my dashboard JSON, and this is all the JSON as you would export from Grafana. So the easiest way to do this is go to Grafana, go to new dashboard, create a dashboard, however you like to do it. Then when you go, so you click on the little wheel at the top, and when you go to JSON model, it will give you the JSON output for what that dashboard looks like in JSON. So I've taken this and just pasted it into a config map and then referred to that in my Grafana dashboard resources. So in my case, I don't need that. I don't need a new dashboard. I already have all I need. So mine go into a folder. Here's the first one, for example. So that's my router. I've got my two servers being monitored. And then these are all of the things that are monitored by that Raspberry Pi that I don't currently have in this version of Prometheus. Here it is in the Kubernetes cluster. We can see all the metrics coming through there from the Kubernetes version of Prometheus. They're just not quite here yet. Not until I can get the Raspberry Pi as a node within the OpenShift cluster. So once we have our dashboards defined, our config maps set up and everything referenced, we can create a version of Grafana. So again, exactly the same thing. We just click create Grafana. We go through and answer all the questions. There's not a lot to it, it's as simple as it sounds. So we have a look at the YAML for mine. We can see that the only thing I've added here that is important, and this is the part that I struggle with a little bit, is we need this dashboard label selector, and we need to have match expressions, we need to give it a key, in this case I'm using the key app, and I'm using the value defined as Grafana. So if we look at our dashboards, we can see here they have a label called app equals Grafana and in, within the YAML there it is their labels app Grafana. Now this is how the Grafana operator is searching for things that are relevant to it. So I've given each data source and each dashboard the label Grafana. Now when you add these, the Grafana operator will automatically find them and then add them to the dashboard, which, which is really convenient. You know, I don't need to go and recompile all of the manifests and then re-roll out the app, I can just simply create a new dashboard in here that has the JSON file and it will go and re recreate that Grafana deployment and my dashboards will show up. So this is, in my opinion, a lot easier than what I was doing previously. The only thing that I might do is then export all of these manifests, so the Grafana dashboards, the um, Grafana data sources and the Grafana resource itself export them, put them into a Git repo, and then have Argo ready to roll it back out if I needed to redeploy this cluster for any reason. That will make life a little bit easier. So other than that, we have some services that are created. So we can see there's a service for Prometheus Web. I've created this one manually. This one wasn't created by the, the operator when it rolled out. That gives me an actual cluster IP that I can refer to. And that's the data source that I'm using from the Grafana dashboards and the Grafana data source. So originally when I deployed this, I didn't have ingress set to true, so it didn't create a route for me. And I created this route manually, but then I changed ingress to true and it goes and creates a route as well, which is actually really handy. So in that in that operator config for Grafana, in the YAML file, you can see here we have ingress enable true. That'll go and create an ingress for you. So that makes life really simple. So then we can just click on the route we've created, which works in my DNS, and we get to Grafana, which is... So then we can see I've, I've got my, my power monitoring, which is working. It's talking to InfluxDB, which is this, the separate data source that we set up. And then the other one we have is our home infrastructure, which is the router and the two servers. So that's really all there is for the monitoring infrastructure, I think. Uh, that will be my video for today. I'll make it nice, short and sweet. Um, as I said in the previous video, I have also deployed Unify here. So Unify has the Notify route set up and the web address set up. So I've migrated all of my network infrastructure over to now speak to this version of Unify. The other thing I have done is set up MQTT. So I have a Mosquito pod deployed here. And the next thing I need to do will be deploy uh, Bitwarden. And for that, I will need Cert Manager to manage the, the SSL certificates. So we'll need to make sure that Cert Manager is up and running. 
and I'll need to deploy Home Assistant. So I'll do both of them in the next video. And then that will be the majority of the apps that I'm using deployed here. Then we can start shutting down some of the VMs that are running on the server. So we can start shut, shutting down some of these Kubernetes VMs and migrate over my work VMs from the OpenStack server over into the Slidvert environment. And then we will reprovision that server as a OpenShift worker node. And we'll, what we'll be doing at that point is using the kubevert operator to create VMs on top of that. And then that's where OpenStack will be deployed. So I'll leave part three there. It's nice, short and sweet, a bit, bit more consumable this week. And for the next one, we will go ahead and migrate the rest of the apps over. And the following video, we will import the node. And at some stage in there, I'll need to figure out how to create a machine config and a machine config pool for my Raspberry Pi. So I've got a new Raspberry Pi here that I'm, I'm ready to set up. So we will do that probably in an upcoming video. I'm not, just not sure when yet.